Hello and welcome to this uh, Sunday morning talk at Barnabas. Great to have you with us. Uh, if you're church members or if you're just viewing online, uh, it's really good to have you with us. I hope you enjoyed the worship if you're here in the Sunday context. This talk is about the issue of race and it's the decision of the Barnabas elders to address this issue now in the light of the events that happened following on from the tragic death of George Floyd on the 25th of May in the USA. And we all know that uh, tremendous things have happened since then. It was a painful, tragic, unnecessary criminal death of this black man in the USA that triggered a, a, a mass response across the Western world and beyond and focused on the Black Lives Matter campaign. We decided not to respond immediately in the heat of the moment, but to take a little bit of time uh, and to speak to the church and to any uh, parts of the wider Christian community who engage with us uh, in response to not just that event, but the things that have happened subsequently, the things that have been said and done, um, and to bring a perspective to this issue. And I want to start in a very personal way. I want to speak to you very personally about this before we come to some wider reflections and looking at the Bible together. Race for me has been a very important part of my personal journey since living abroad as a youngster in the country of Pakistan and appreciating racial differences and their significance in a number of different ways. And also since um, my teenage years, at the age of 15, I became a Christian. I was uh, privileged in a, in a private school, but many of my friends were from different racial groups. I remember having a group of Malaysian friends. Um, I remember having also a Jewish teacher who had, with his family, escaped the Nazis in the 1930s, and he told me what it was like to live as a young child in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. I never forgot that story. But the particular story that influenced me most was the story of my Indian friend, my South African Indian friend, who I was very friendly with at school. We used to play music together and have fun together. And he came from the Indian community in South Africa. South Africa has many racial groups. There's a significant Indian community. And the, the thing that happened was that when I left school shortly afterwards, I went to South Africa in those days in 1978 in the apartheid regime. The races were separated. Whites were privileged. And I visited my friend's family, an Indian family in an Indian district in the city of Durban in South Africa. And I received a very warm welcome. But I couldn't go to their home legally because of the racial discrimination of the apartheid regime. And so I experienced as a young Christian, as a teenager, that I'd been equal with my friend in this country and we were unequal in another country. And I saw the power of racial discrimination in raw face value. And what happened to me then was that I didn't just think about racism, I felt it. And one of the big issues that's going on at the moment in, in our culture is that for many people, uh, particularly white people who've not experienced racial discrimination, for the most part in any situation in their lives, it's easy to think about race and racism, but it's only when you feel the power of it as many black people do and many other ethnic groups do in our country, that you understand more deeply uh, the significance of race and how it functions in our culture. I just got an initial glimpse into that in those distant days as a very young Christian, and it helped form my way of thinking about race. More recently, having worked with the Jubilee Plus charity and headed it up for 10 years, we have been engaged very directly with this issue as a team. We know that race and poverty are closely linked together. Black and Asian communities uh, will be disproportionately suffering, suffering from uh, poverty and other social dep deprivation across the country. We know that as a fact. I've also had some other 
important experiences. I've been to the summer camp, the New Day summer camp run by the wider New Frontiers movement. I remember sitting in that camp amongst all these thousands of teenagers and noticing how many black teenagers were there. A huge proportion were black. And it had a really powerful effect on me emotionally to see these black youngsters, mostly from inner cities, worshipping together with uh, other white uh, community teenagers from different social contexts and see them coming together. It, it made me very emotional, to be honest, to see that coming together and to sense God's heart for the coming together of the races. Most recently, I've had the privilege of uh, getting to know Ben Lindsay, uh, uh, a young black man from, from the New Frontiers movement in London, um, who wrote a book recently, We Need uh, to Talk About Race. And I had the privilege of meeting him in London, talking about his book. He's founded a charity that uh, is addressing the issue of knife crime. He works with the mayor of London, with parliamentarians, uh, and he's an influential voice in this debate and has become a friend. And I've learned from friendships like that, as well as friendships with other black uh, church leaders. For example, Topi Colioso, who leads the Jubilee Church in, in North London. Five years or six years ago, he did a seminar that I led, uh, uh, I, I hosted in the Devoted Festival on racial integration in churches. It was the most moving seminar of how he built his church around racial integration and affirming each race um, in his congregation. He's a very powerful and influential and talented uh, black church leader of Nigerian origin. When he finished his seminar, I prepared a few words to thank him for what he'd said, but I found I was overwhelmed with emotion and tears and I just couldn't bring the words out. I was so touched by what he said and all I could do was to say, Toppy, please pray for us at the end and we embrace together at the front as he prayed for that congregation. So those are just some personal things. I, I'm deliberately being very personal in this talk because our experience of race and our perception of it touches deep parts in our personal lives and our personal histories and we all bring different histories to the table. I wanted to share some of the things that have influenced me very deeply uh, in my own life. Now, as we look at racism in this country, we can identify unambiguously the challenges that black communities face, which have been highlighted by the recent um, events around the world and in the country and the Black Lives Matter campaign. But I want to extend the conversation a little bit beyond that very, very important narrative. I want to say unambiguously that even though legally in our country uh, we don't have any racism built into our legal system and any things that emerge that have the risk of that are always identified and dealt with, but in our culture it does exist. And I can see at least four major manifestations of it. Racism as it affects the black communities, Secondly, racism as it affects Asian communities, particularly in areas where Asian communities are a major part of the population in some uh, urban areas. Thirdly, in the last decade or so, we've seen racial attitudes and racism towards Eastern Europeans coming and working in this country, particularly those who are migrant laborers coming into this country. That's a, a clear racist narrative that has emerged in some parts of our country to some extent. And fourthly, different again, anti-Semitism. I mentioned it earlier on, but we've seen a spike in anti-Semitism in terms of incidents of anti-Semitic attacks and the particular difficulty one of our major political parties got with, in with anti-Semitism uh, within the party in the last few years. So racism comes in many forms. It's a challenge for our country. And because we have many different races represented, both in our citizenship and also in the process of immigration and labour markets, um, it's a big issue in the UK. So what about the church? How do we respond to all this? There will be those personal, emotional responses that we might make based on our own experiences. But I want to now move on from those. 
And I want to suggest to you that the church has an opportunity in this particular cultural moment to demonstrate something of God's grace and his power and his love of humanity in all its diversity um, in, in our community life. And this is happening in many churches around the country. Matthew chapter 5 verses 14 to 16 uh, reads as follows you are the light of the world a town built on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven now this is a fantastic vision that, uh, for the church generally in our country and we can apply this to any issue but we can apply it to race that as we see racial integration and racial respect uh, within the church um, then it will give glory to god the father and people will be drawn to christ that's a big general aspiration but being a bit more specific and a bit more practical it's interesting to reflect that in the days of the early church, right at the very beginning of church history, as recorded in the New Testament, race was a big issue. And this racial issue manifested itself in a different way than we might experience now. The issue was that the Jews felt that they were a privileged race because of all that God had given them through our history, all the covenants, all the Old Testament period, the law of Moses, um, even the gospel of Jesus Christ, which came first to the Jews. And so there was a real difficulty in integrating in the church Jewish believers and non-Jewish believers who we call generically Gentiles in the context of the New Testament. There were lots of clashes and difficulties about that cultural integration into the church. There was even the risk in the very early days of a church split over race, which is identified in the book of Acts and led to a church council where all the apostles came together in Jerusalem in Acts 15, where they're trying to decide to what extent believers had to become like the Jews in order to come into the church. So race was a big issue in the early days and it was something that Paul the Apostle battled with as he tried to show people that the gospel brings a radical equality amongst the races. It, the gospel has the power to break down the cultural divisions and hostility that exists between races as between Jews and Gentiles in the first century. Paul has a really big vision of this and he describes this in theological terms in Ephesians 2 and verses 14 to 18 for he himself Jesus is our peace who has made the two groups one that's Jews and Gentiles and has destroyed the barrier the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, that's the Jewish law, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. So he made peace and brought reconciliation through the cross. The cross is the leveller. Whatever racial background you have, you have no privilege access to God in the new covenant. You, and, and whatever racial background you have, you're not inferior you're not disadvantaged in your access to God. That's Paul's message. That's the theological foundation of the church, which is an anti-racist foundation in, based on the death of Jesus and what it means for humanity. Everyone comes in 
on an equal footing, neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female, according to Galatians 3. So your human status doesn't give you a different relationship with God. So that's the foundation upon which we build. Now, as we look around our country today, we see what God is doing in the church. We can see three main signs of encouragement and hope and renewal. Three areas where the church is growing. These are broad generalizations, but these are three things that matter. First of all, we can see the renewal of churches in their denominations, whether they're Pentecostal or Baptist or Anglican or other. We see movements like the New Wine Movement and the Holy Trinity Brompton Network and all sorts of other similar movements where we see God renewing those churches. That's a great sign of life. Secondly, we see what we call the new church movements, the ones that started from scratch, meeting in houses and homes in the 1970s and 1980s and have now developed churches, some of which have developed churches of hundreds and thousands. And that's called the New Church Movement. We're part of that at Barnabas because our founding movements, New Frontiers, was exactly that, a new church movement. But the third sign of encouragement, and this is the relevant point for our topic today, is we see a significant rise in significance and influence of black church leadership and black majority churches especially in urban areas and focused most of all in our capital city London and this is changing the uh, the chemistry of the church in this country leaders like pastor Agu Iwuku of, G of Jesus House uh, which is a, an, a, a, and, the, and the movements associated with it are now very influential figures in this country they're bringing church growth, they're gathering uh, thousands of people together and they have a, a real passion for racial integration. So one of the great exciting stories of the church in our country is particularly in respect of black and white, just to deal with that racial issue specifically, we're seeing an increasing partnership between white majority and white-led churches and black majority and black-led churches wanting the same kingdom to advance and choosing to work together and bring their distinctive contributions. This is happening in our country. And this is a sense in which the church can be a light set on a hill and we can avoid the trap of racism and perhaps repent of some of the racist attitudes that individuals or churches may have had in the past. So with those thoughts in mind, and coming back to our local situation at Barnabas, I want to say on behalf of the eldership team and all the other leadership teams, this church is welcoming of the fact that it represents a variety of different races, as well as the fact that it represents a wide different uh, a group of ages uh, and social backgrounds, all these things are important and, and valuable, but the racial component is received and appreciated. It enriches our church. Here are four things I wonder whether we could focus on and think about as we reflect on what's happened in our country uh, in the last few months concerning the discussion about race. First of all, we should be praying, praying for our country, for racial harmony. Uh, it's a very important matter, especially in some parts of the country where racial tensions are much higher than they are in the area where we live. Secondly, at a personal level, can I say to you that knowledge is very empowering in this area? There are two types of knowledge I've got in mind. One is personal knowledge. The more people we know and relate to, from different racial backgrounds, uh, the better. And it's been my privilege all the way through my life to know and be friends with people from different racial backgrounds. And I'm very grateful for my parents, long dead now, who modeled this to their family by welcoming into their home and relating closely to people from different races. It just became a natural thing for me growing up to consider. 
And the second knowledge that uh, is helpful, sometimes good to read stories about uh, people uh, who, who, who have suffered from racism uh, and, and to understand that narrative. If it's never been your experience, sometimes it's good just to find out about other people's experience. And so I'm recommending to you the book I mentioned earlier on, Ben Lindsay, We Need to Talk About Race. There are other, many other resources and books that you could read. And we know that racism has had its hold in the history of our country going back for hundreds of years. And much of that is being discussed in our media at the moment. And the more we know about that, the better. So there's prayer, there's knowledge. A third response would be personal reflection. What has this issue raised within, within me, within you? as an individual, as a, as a family unit? That's an important question to ask. What emotions does it bring out in me? What painful experiences in the past have, have I got to navigate? Um, what prejudices have I picked up accidentally from people um, or, or, or around me or the culture or even the media? So prayer, knowledge, personal reflection, and finally, in being intentional. As Christians, we can be intentional in the workplace, in our neighbourhoods, in the things we study, in how we relate to people, in how we relate in the church community, to engage with people from different cultural and racial backgrounds, understand their story and help them to understand ours. We can be intentional as Christians. And many churches are now beginning to consider this issue more strategically. And of course, it depends where you live in the country as to how this issue works out. The racial mix of our own community here isn't remotely similar to what it might be in central Birmingham or central London. We have to be true to our area and the people who are in our area, but we can intentionally say we want to stand against racism, we want to model the biblical reality that the body of Christ represents equally male and female, young and old, rich and poor, black and white and all other races, uh, however they might be defined. Racism has touched our country in a variety of different ways. I've given you four examples earlier on, and there are others too that I haven't mentioned. Those are four that seem to be significant uh, in terms of the uh, scope of their influence in our culture. This is a time for the church to reflect, for the church to go back to the Bible, for the church to be confident in our views and to be creative in our relationships with people. Uh, to overcome any cultural racism that might accidentally have influenced us. So thanks for listening. I hope this talk is a help to you as you navigate that journey and as we as a church navigate that journey together in the months and years to come. Thanks for listening. See you again soon.